An intelligence explosion happens when an intelligent agent gains the ability to self-improve, leading to rapid and unstoppable increases in its capabilities. The idea of an intelligence explosion definitely feels like something straight out of a sci-fi movie. But it's a scenario taken seriously by AI experts like Jeffrey Hinton, the godfather of AI. He left his post last week as engineering fellow at Google so that he could freely warn people about the imminent and existential dangers of AI. But before you go out and buy a leather jacket and a shotgun for Mother's Day, there are some things you should probably know. The word apocalypse means a lot of things to different people, but most people view it as the end of the world. But it's actually a lot more nuanced. It comes from the Greek word, ap um, ap it comes from this Greek word, which means revelation and unveiling or unfolding of things not previously known and which could not be known apart from the unveiling. Dr. Andrew Henry, a scholar of religious studies, gives a technical definition of apocalypticism. A worldview that anticipates the imminent end of the present age, an age ruled by corrupt and evil powers. However, a new era is upon us during which we will witness the overthrow of the present age, the transformation of the world, and the inauguration of God's rule. This worldview often comes about amid times of intense social and political change, liminal moments in human history where people are feeling anxious and alienated and the idea of someone coming to right all the wrongs and change everything feels really good. Apocalypticism is an idea as old as humanity itself. AI apocalyptic scenarios often feature secular versions of all the same stuff. An artificial super intelligence would be able to see through the fabric of the universe, see things that we can't see, glean insights that we can't Clean. It would usher in a new utopia for humanity, at least if it's an aligned superintelligence. On the other side of the coin, there's also the death and destruction that usually comes along with apocalyptic scenarios. In the AI apocalypse, the dystopia would rise from an unaligned superintelligence. A superintelligence doesn't have to be evil to really f our world up. I mean, think of the way we treat wild animals. Our society treats entities that we view as lower intelligence, <laughs> kind of like shit. We support a system that will casually destroy animal habitats because I don't know, we got goals, goal functions to fulfill. F those squirrels, the, the squirrels can get, they can find another tree. There's f trees everywhere. Either way, utopia, dystopia, AI apocalypticism, like all apocalypticism, speaks to drastic change to the current order. Human sacrifice, dogs and cats living together, mass hysteria. Given this new context, a more accurate view of the AI apocalypse might be a remaking of the world. So is it all hype? Well, no. To understand the current situation and where we're headed, it definitely helps to understand a little bit about back propagation. Let's use a hypothetical image model that will detect whether an image is of a hot dog or a um, not hot dog. An image of a hot dog is basically just a sequence of numbers, RGB values for each pixel in the image. We start off with a random set of weights, just a bunch of random numbers in the matrix. We then take an image of a hot dog and give it to the network as input. For this example, we'll assume the network output 0.5, 50, 50 shot of it being a hot dog. In other words, it has no idea. So how do we change each of the weights in the network so that the next time we ask it about this image, it will say it's 51% chance that it's a hot dog? Well, we take the result and we do math. We repeat this process many, many times and with more pictures of hot dogs. And eventually you end up with a model that can look at pictures and tell you if it's a hot dog or not. The key takeaway here is the neural network is a black box to us. In my very first video I did on this channel, I talked about how we are nowhere near replicating the complexity of the human brain. Our brains have billions of neurons with 100 trillion interconnections. The interconnections are what give the human neural network its intelligence. These large language models, on the other hand, have an order of magnitude less interconnections. One trillion. So they're much, much better at getting a lot of knowledge into only a trillion connections than we are. The hypothesis Hinton is putting forward here is that backpropagation is a more efficient learning algorithm than whatever the hell it is our brain does. It can pack much more information in a smaller set of neurons and connections. When humans were first trying to fly, we mimicked what we saw in nature. Wings, feathers, hollow bones, flapping. But it turns out you don't need to build an entire self-healing, self-feeding, self-replicating pigeon to fly. If your only goal is flight, you can do it in a much simpler way. All you need is wheels, an engine, and some fixed wings. Much simpler, more effective at the goal. 
AI with the ability to recursively self-improve on its learning algorithms leads to the idea of an intelligence explosion. It's taken humans thousands of years to get to the point where we are today. A self-improving AI might be able to make scientific progress much quicker, like months or days. Some people even say hours. This is referred to as a hard takeoff, where positive feedback loops lead to a very dramatic leap in capability very quickly. AI apocalypticism gives a name to this moment that brings about a new age, the singularity. Now, if you know a little bit about math, you might recognize this as an exponential curve. Things that grow exponentially are very hard for humans to internalize with our tiny meat brains. Just think about what happened during the pandemic. One person gets sick, they get somebody else sick. Each of these people will get two other people sick. At first, exponential growth is very hard to see. It starts off small and slow, but after a certain point, it's everywhere. And if you aren't paying attention while it's small and growing, it'll come at you completely by surprise. Now, intelligence is a lot more nebulous concept than the idea of viruses. If you don't understand what intelligence is, it may be easy to dismiss fears like this as overblown. After all, we can just turn it off, right? I think it'll very quickly realize that getting more control is a very good sub goal because it helps you achieve other goals. If these things get carried away with getting more control, we're in trouble. There are all kinds of different ways that intelligence can manifest itself. One of the more dangerous ways, in my opinion, that it manifests itself is in emotional manipulation. In my last video, I showed how easy it was to get GPT-4 to manipulate my mom. An entity that understands how to manipulate people can accomplish a lot without having to pull any levers itself. And the thing is, we could sit here and talk about all kinds of different ways a super intelligence could potentially do harm in our world and then talk about how to defend against each of those ways. And yeah, if we do that and game out each scenario, yeah, you can probably come up with a defense for some kind of attack vector, whatever you can think of. <laughs> but I mean, that, that misses the point. The point is you won't think of it. It's a very hard concept to understand something that's smarter than you. Smart entities will outsmart us. You know, imagine your two-year-old saying, my dad does things I don't like, so I'm gonna make some rules for what my dad can do. You could probably figure out how to live with those rules and still get what you want. We are effectively living out the tragedy of the commons right now. So I think if you take the existential risk seriously, mm -hmm. as I now do, I used to think it was way off, but I now think it's serious and fairly close. Um, it might be quite sensible to just stop developing these things any further. But I think it's completely naive to think that would happen. Even if every one of us agrees that we should pause, which we don't, by the way, but even if we do, we can't, none of us can. There are too many pressures, too many pressures from the system. If Google stops, OpenAI will eat its lunch. If OpenAI and Google stop, Anthropic will dominate the field. If the US stops, another government might not. And whoever gets to AGI first, basically wins capitalism. In AI safety circles, this idea is personified by Mullick, the invisible monster who makes us do things we really wish we wouldn't. The name comes from the Old Testament as a name for a Canaanite god who loves human sacrifices. We all have to do our part to satiate the monster. And I wish I had a nice simple solution I could push, but I don't. But I think it's very important that people get together and think hard about it and see whether there is a solution. It's not clear there is a solution. Once we reach the point where an AI is smarter than us and self-improving, there's, there's not really much we can do. We don't know how to program empathy into an inscrutable matrix of floating point numbers. And given the pace of AI development, we probably don't have a lot of time to figure it out. But we need to try and do that in a world where there's bad actors who want to build robot soldiers that kill people. So I'm sorry, I'm, I'm sounding the alarm and saying we have to worry about this. Compared to other scientific fields, there's a, a very small amount of people working on AI safety. The field is pre-paradigmatic, which is a really fancy way of saying there's no consensus <laughs> and we don't know what the hell we're doing. That does sound pretty bleak, but you have to look at it from more than one side. A pre-paradigmatic field also means there's probably a lot of low-hanging fruit in the various subfields of AI safety. Hearing that and seeing the enormity of the situation, it's easy to feel hopeless and maybe even apathetic. In the end, all of our efforts might lead to nothing. We may not be able to solve this problem. Humanity may just be a passing evolutionary step on the road to more advanced intelligence. Nobody knows what the future holds, especially not me. What I do know 
is if and when the end does come, I want to be able to say, I at least tried. Do not go gentle into that good night. Old age should burn and rave a closer day. Rage, rage against the dying of the light. Though wise men at their end, no dark is right. Because their words had fought no lightning, they do not go gentle into that good night. Rage, rage against the dying of the light. <laughs>